you must catch a carp using tackle baits and methods inspired by each decade dating back to the dawn of modern carp fishing. I feel like I'm well prepared for this and I'm really excited, Harry. You're doing the noughties, right? You'd be walking up and down that bank, walking them out, so I fully expect you to do that. <laughs> right now, it's really not going my way at all. If I wake up and nothing's happened, it's a different story entirely. Oh, never. What? It's that, a tent. It's a fucking park bench. And I can still do it. Get in that net, bush! Come on, I, uh, I want to get moving now. I've got a proper spring in my step. Look at the bed did that. It just feel like the biggest one I've hooked so far. I needed to get this so badly. Mark, you're in, you're in, you're in. Super excited. That's the most exciting brain. Or the most excited I've ever been about catching a brain. And that leaves me with just two more decades to go and about 12 hours to do it. I'm Mark Pitchers, ways aware of tea drinking, caffeine intolerance, beard trimming, carp freak. I've been an angler for over 30 years and caught carp from waters far and wide, big and small. For me, it doesn't matter where, as long as the challenge is exciting and inspiring. But in this series, the target is out of my control. Three challenges will be put forward on Fox's Facebook page. Then it's up to you to have the final say on what mission I take on. I've faced some incredibly tough challenges so far. Have you been drinking de-icer again? Some of which I've smashed out the park. This one for the win. Others have dealt me a devastating blow. I literally have no words. But I'm still here and ready to pick up any gauntlet that is thrown down. This carp freak is not giving up without a fight. Yes! This is the challenge. What's up, carp freaks, and welcome back to another challenge. Now, this one I am really excited for. The last challenge we did, mm, didn't enjoy that one quite so much, but this one I can't wait to get stuck into. It is called Carping Through the Decades, and it says, you must catch a carp using tackle baits and methods inspired by each decade dating back to the dawn of modern carp fishing. Richard Walker's British record, Clarissa, caught back in the 1950s right up to present day. The order you complete the challenge is up to you, but Harry has a final say on if you have represented that decade appropriately. Good luck. So, yeah, Harry did tell me about this challenge a couple of weeks ago, so I have had time to prepare. And I have come down to Suffolk Water Park, which I feel will give me a good chance of passing this challenge. I feel like I'm well prepared for this, and I'm really excited, Harry. I, I, I'm excited too. I really am looking forward to seeing what you've got planned mm. for each decade. So there's no time like, like the present. Yeah. Let's go back in time. I remember the days All those years ago that never fade away And I remember your face When you hit the ground I can recall the time and place Well I do have a plan for this challenge and right now I'm on the big lake and I am in a swim called Last Thoughts. Um, but my first thoughts are to use this swim. You like that? Oh, you, you, yeah, you, you like yeah, that, I did, didn't you? I did, yeah. <laughs> my, yeah, my plan is to use this swim as a bit of a, a base. I feel there's quite a few decades I can tick off the list on the big lake, but I can't pass all the challenge from here. There are other lakes on the complex that I feel will give me a, a better chance of, of passing some of the more tricky decades. So I'm going to use this swim as my base. I'm going to get set up, I'm going to get prepared and ready to take on this challenge full bore. I like that. I would normally say balls deep or, or 
wide gape or something like that. But Take on this challenge, wide gape. Fully gaped. <laughs> Take on this challenge, fully erect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Get your kit out of the van then. Yeah, here we go. Stay tuned for the rest of this video because not only will you find out whether Mark passes or fails this challenge, but you will also have the opportunity to win a really special, unique prize and support a very worthy cause. This is modern day carping, isn't it? This is literally the 2020s, ticked off the list already. Park next to the swim, rods out, heated seats on, munger on the dance floor, mush, get in that net. Yeah? Can't get it. This is quite a naughty thing to do, to take Oh, yes. Because to. you didn't have dedicated vessels, de dedicated fishing vessels. Yeah. Everything was Tupperware. Yeah. It's taking me longer. I like it how, yeah, before, before anything happens, before you, you think about getting your rods out, <laughs> getting rigs sorted, getting bait sorted, you're camo taping up your pot of Earl Grey. Be that's because I know by doing this, it's, it's effectively a naughty's thing ticked off the list. Don't even need to catch a fish, do I? No, yeah, you still need to, still catch, to a catch a fish. A fish. I'm not, I'm not going to go, oh yeah, you camera taped up a, a, a pot of Earl Grey, you've completed the naughties. you can catch on whatever. Oh, that's kind to... of what I was hoping. No. I, I literally thought if I do this, I can just fish however I want and just tick off the naughties off the list. No, that's like smoke, smoking from a pipe. You've completed the 50s. It doesn't want to be too precise, does it? If it looks like you've tried, you've already failed. So there's a, a moral there, isn't there? Moral to that little story. Never try. Never, never try. <laughs> if, you, if you're having to try, you've already lost. If you have actually, with the amount of time that this is taking, I'd, I'd say that you're probably trying. No, I'm not even trying. I would say if you have to try, just give up. <laughs> Where's the milk for these? Because these are going to get cold. <laughs> Where's your milk? I've just seen two coots having sex. So I've got everything set up and ready to go. Um, the reason I've chosen this swim is when I arrived this morning, a guy in the swim right next to the car park had just slipped a fish back. He'd had quite a few fish this morning and I've just walked in the swim next door and while I've been stood here, I have seen a few fish showing. So it does seem like there are a few fish in this sort of general area. So my opening plan for this challenge is to try and tick off the noughties. So using rigs presentation synonymous with that era. Um, I just want to get some rods in the water at the moment while there are a few fish in the area and I really do feel like I need to put a fish on the bank before we go into this evening. So whether it happens on this lake or whether we have to move and change tactics, change eras, I don't know. But right now I just want to get some rods in the water and hopefully try and make the most of the fish that are in the area. I'm just having a few casts around with the with the leading rod. One of the tactics I used to use all the time in the early noughties was a snowman presentation. And that's what I want to use to kick off this challenge with. So for that reason, I'm looking for a, a nice clean area. I'm told there's quite a bit of, of weed, eelgrass out there. I want to be fishing with a, a bottom bait, so I want to make sure the lake beds clean just stuck in a bit of weed there now I just pulled free see I want to make sure I'm fishing over a nice clean lake bed to make the most of that snowman presentation did it go down nice it goes down really hard yeah but I'm not getting anything it's not gravel Yeah. 
You're doing the noughties, right? Yeah. There is no way you'd have wrapped up in the noughties. No chance. You were not wrapping up in the noughties. <laughs> I think I was. Nah. No. I remember. Nah. Definitely. The noughties is all about walking it out down the, down the track or just guessing. You wouldn't have wrapped out in the... In okay. The I don't no, believe you. That was definitely 2010s onwards, wasn't it? Pretty much. So what you're saying? I mean, I am using. I mean, I wasn't also using them alarms and them rods in the naughty. No, we were talking about like methods and and tactics and like rods and alarms. You'd have used fox bite alarms and you'd have used carbon rods, but you wouldn't have wrapped it out. You'd be walking up and down that bank walking them out so i fully expect you to do that <laughs> all right yeah that's that's fair enough actually right on yeah. your bike go on <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah can i use uh, can i use a no I don't, i'm not even going to ask you doesn't matter <laughs> what can you doesn't use a what doesn't matter i know what the answer is so it doesn't matter what were okay. you gonna say no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so how we used to do it before the distance sticks was I used to put my lead either um, on a, a fence post or on a, on, a, on a bivy peg or something like that and then walk back with the rod until I hit the clip on the line and put another, another bivy peg where I stood and that was the distance that I would repeat with the, with the fishing rods itself. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to drop my lead behind this and the fence post, got a bivy peg ready. I'm just gonna walk back till I hit the clip. Hopefully there's enough room. So I'm now stood behind the guy in the next swim and I've hit the clip on the reel Lay that on the ground, put a bivy peg right next to the clip. And there's my marker. I just need to repeat that with the fishing rods, clip them all up, tie on some marker elastic. And uh, then if I do get a fish, all I need to do really is a, is a dummy cast until I get to the marker elastic. And then just put it in the clip, save me walking it out every time. Right, let's do that with the fishing rods now. Here we go. There we go. So that's two rods all paced out to the same distance as the, the leading rod. We've got one more rod to do. And we'll get some bait in and get fishing on that spot. Well, I bet you don't know what these are. So these are spods and it's what we used to use before the invention of the SPOM and impact spots. And at the time we thought they were, they were great, a great way of delivering bait to the swim, but in comparison to what we have now, they are pretty poor, really. Uh, they didn't hold a lot of bait. Uh, what bait you did get in, half of it used to come out the back end on the, on the cast. Um, they didn't weigh a lot, so they couldn't be cast at long range because they couldn't hold much bait. They wouldn't fly particularly true in flight. Um, but yeah, I'm going to use one for the first time in about 15 years and uh, bring back some old memories, uh, bad memories, probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, right, let's uh, spawn some munger on the dance floor. I think is what we say. So I've filled the spod level with the, the bottom of the flights there. If you put any more bait in, it would just fly out of the top. Um, but yeah, it, um, it's not a lot of bait. It doesn't weigh a lot. Um, so I'm gonna have to hit this a lot harder than if I was spomming or using an impact spod 
So although I'm fishing at around 80 yard range, I'm going to have to hit this like I was fishing in excess of 100. Plus we've got a, a really strong uh, headwind today as well. So yeah, I'm going to have to give this uh, a bit of effort. Right, how are you going to fly? I'm, I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested as to how this is going to end up. Um, right, here you go. You're going to fly straight? I don't know. Didn't go out too bad, actually. Didn't go out too bad. Now, with the, the spot, it isn't like a spawn where you can just reel in instantly. Uh, it opens on impact and you, as you reel away, you, all the bait gets flushed out. It's not like that with this spot. You have to leave it sort of bobbing there for, for about five minutes for it, to, <laughs> for it to empty out. By which time it's drifted about 10 yards and you've baited a 10 yard area. But whatever, we'll, uh, we'll make do the best we can. So now we want to tie our little PVA stick and Harry, I think you're going to like this. Look what I found. <laughs> so that will be Fox's original PVA stick funnel system. I found that in my garage. That's that the is... original packaging from, from yeah, like, nearly 20 years ago that'll have it, it, that'll it will out. be yeah let's hope the pva still <laughs> yeah. that's quality that yeah still immaculate as well <laughs> yeah never even took it out hasn't even got a knot tied in the end so these are the rigs that i'm going to be using and as i mentioned before it's a, a snowman setup I have got a live system boilie topped off with a white Carp Freaks pop-up. White because I think this was probably my, my favorite color in the noughties, a white pop-up. This has been fished on a blowback rig, which was probably my most popular rig from the 90s to current day for my, for my bottom baits, actually. Um, I've just got a, a rig ring there tied off level with the barb. Uh, I've got a size six wide gape hook. Um, and to increase the length of the shank and to improve the hooking properties of the rig, I've got quite a long length of shrink tube. Back then, I would have used a long length of silicon tube, actually. I never kind of followed the trend, which a lot of people did with the really aggressive intern angle of the shrink tube. I always liked it to just to more increase the the, the hook shank and improve the hooking properties. And this is fished on a coated braid. Here I'm using the 20 pound Camatex Soft. Um, I'd have been using something very similar back in the, in the day. Um, so yeah, that's the rig. Now I'm going to attach my stick. I haven't got a stick needle, but I've got a latch gate baiting needle. Little tiny stick of attraction there. You just thread the, the needle through the stick. gate over there slide the slide the stick right down over the hook hook point just nicked inside the nicked inside the little stick of attraction look at that why is no one doing that anymore why why harry i don't i don't know it's great look at it i know that's a bite does, all day it long it is it does look great well done if I wasn't so lazy, I'd do that every time. Your, your manga mix. The old manga mix, yeah. Rod's been in. What do you reckon? Literally about two minutes. Yeah. That was the last one that got cast out. Yeah. This is uh, not the one. Not the one. Manga mix isn't the one on bream infested lakes, is it? 
He's a a bumpy old thing. Do you want me to hold him up for the camera? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to. There you, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Munger Mix probably isn't the one on a bream-infested lake, really. But. Uh, Hopefully that's the only one in here. I don't know. Apart from the 17 that the guy had the other night, apparently. Mm, mm. Yeah. Oh, please no. Please no. That that was li literally two minutes. It you was turned, two minutes. Turned around. I actually and <laughs> cast it out, put on. the bobbin on, turned to walk away, and it went. <laughs> oh no! Come on, just no. Just no. <laughs> this is where people say, well, at least I know my rigs are working. No, you don't. It's a brain. It doesn't count. <laughs> well, initially, my plan was to get set up here, fish here for a few hours, and then move on to another lake to try and accomplish some of the more tricky decades, but I hadn't anticipated it was going to take me so long to get set up. I'd forgotten how long it actually takes to spot bait out when you can only introduce like a small handful of bait at a time. And even just knocking the spot mix together and the stick mix together it took ages. I remember now why I used to do all that at home before I went fishing. But I'm quite happy going into tonight in this swim because I've just sat down and worked it out and I can probably, I think from this lake, I can do four decades here. But in the four most recent decades, I think I can use tactics synonymous with each decade that will put fish on the bank at this lake. So hopefully that can all happen tonight or I can at least get underway tonight and then there'll be enough time left in the bank to move on to some of the other lakes on the complex to try and tick off some more of the, 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 the trickier eels. Watch this. Look at it. Look at it. Oh, you orange morpho. Look at that. Right. Get on. Well, it's about half past three in the morning and after a few more bream, I am now playing a carp, which at first I thought also was a bream, <laughs> but it definitely isn't. It's pulling. It doesn't feel too bad as well. It feels a decent fish. So if I land this, I would consider myself slightly ahead of, of schedule. I needed to get this so badly, so badly. I'd have been right up against it. There he is, there he is. There we go, there you go. Yay, we're up and running. Oh, that's good, that's good. Oh, it's, it's early, it's only, it's still night time really, thank you. What have we got here? We've got a, got a nice mirror, maybe. Well, yeah, it's a 20 pounder, I think. 20 pounder. 
I think is what they call it. So two scale. Yes, that's the one. That's the one I wanted. So that's good because that's the one I've got. Oh yes. Right, that's it. Challenge is up and running. And we're not even not even in the bite time yet, I wouldn't have said. So that's good. Now you just got to change all your tactics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There we go, I am up and running. And that is the Naughties ticked off the list. We've got a really nice looking mirror of probably about 21 pounds, something like that. Fell to a, a snowman rig with a little PVA stick over some munga on the dance floor. Yeah, that's the, that's the Naughties. But now I'm gonna fast forward to the 2010s so i need to slip this fella back i need to get some new rigs tied ones which are more synonymous with the 2010s and try and get another decade ticked off the list there you go there you go there he is look at that So I'm now going to tie up a rig which is pretty synonymous with my 2010s and that is the hinge stiff rig. You've probably seen uh, me using my version of this rig before with the, the doubled over 30 pound rigidity. Um, this version has caught me so many fish ever since I started using it in the, in the early 2010s and I have continued to use that right up to present day. So I feel, I feel very happy with this presentation and uh, super confident it's gonna uh, put a fish on the bank. This won't be the only change I make though to this, this decade, Harry. No? No. You're gonna make more changes? Yeah. Well, good, because I wouldn't have accepted just changing your rig and sticking it back over the spot as a change. <laughs> what, you, what else are you going to do? Well, you'll see when it comes to the baiting up. Now, what I feel is one of the biggest advances in carp fishing in recent years was the introduction of the spom. It meant we could bait much more efficiently than, than with a spod and that's what I'm going to switch over to now. Well not the spawn but the impact spod which followed on a few years later and something else we were doing as well as spawning was we were wrapping. So I'm going to get this impact spot on, get some distance sticks in the ground and uh, let's see how many wraps I'm at? How many wraps do you reckon you're at? I reckon, I said to you, I reckon this is just over 80 yards, didn't I? That's what I said. Yeah. So I reckon it's 21 wraps I'm fishing at. That's what I reckon. Let's see. 21. Huh. And a bit. That was quite, <laughs> that was pretty accurate. 21 and a bit wraps. So yeah, I said I was fishing just over 80 yards, so I'm about 80, 85 yard, actually. So yeah, there we go. So I can do the same on the fishing rods now. I know they're absolutely all on the money. I mean, to be fair, I thought they're all pretty much on the money by pacing it out. This is so much easier. And I don't need to go to the next guy's swim.
Well, after I caught that low 20, I had hoped that was going to be the start of a flurry of activity, but it hasn't proven to be the case at all. Uh, we're now early in the morning and I'm already well behind schedule on this challenge. And if nothing happens soon, I'm going to be massively up against this. So there are a number of other lakes on this complex that I feel will give me a better chance and present me with better possibilities and options to tick some more of these decades off the list. So I'm now going to have a bit of a, a mini pack down and if it hasn't kicked off by, by the time I've packed my gear away, I think I need to be reeling these rods, loading the van and heading off to another lake on the complex because right now it's really not going my way at all. They're magnificent. So I've now come over onto the M1 lake, which I'm told has a good stock of double figure fish. And I'm hoping I'll be able to tick off some of the earlier decades from the list. And to help me do so, Harry, I've got a, a nice surprise for you. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So go and get it, them. Well. If it's a nice surprise. Yeah. I, I, I think you'd like it. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Harry. Yeah. Check out my big 10 foot dick. <laughs> your, your what? My 10 foot dick walker carp rod. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. This looks like something you'd be into. I did, I'm actually quite. I'm not gonna lie. Like I this. never knew I was so into dick until I actually got one in my hands. <laughs> and then I'm like, this. <laughs> just, just hold that. I, give me I'm a, give gonna me, pull on give, your dick. Give me, give me a pull. Give me a pull. <laughs> oh, it's a surprisingly soft and floppy dick. <laughs> I thought it was. Careful. <laughs> Careful. It's about 100 years old. <laughs> I've tried to slacken the clutch <laughs> off, that doesn't work. So, right. so okay, tell, so, so, yeah, tell no. me a bit of the story. So What's for going on? this challenge, in homage to what is arguably the godfather of carp yeah. fishing, well, just god yeah. of carp fishing, really, it's uh, Dick Walker. Yeah. And here I have one of his 10 foot House of Hardy Richard Walker carp rods. Wow. And I mean, that's, I really do appreciate this effort, actually. That is epic. It, and it you've really got, is. You've got, I can see you've got another one I've, in the van. Oh, there's only one thing better than having a big floppy dick in your hand. <laughs> having that's having two big floppy dicks in your hand. Of course. There you go. I've got a pair of them, yeah. Wow. And Beautiful. Is that a, that's a Mitchell... A Mi what yeah, is it's it? a Mitchell 300. Um, wow. So I actually had a set of Mitchell oh, 300s. Careful. I'm not going to... Yeah, make sure yeah. the door doesn't <laughs> shut on them. Please. I had a set of Mitchell 300s. These are worth a lot of money. The, and I never really got the whole old antique tackle vibe. I never got that. I'm like, what's the point? It's been and gone. But now I've got them. I think these are... Careful, you're going to snap it. I, I think... Oh, you've got to wind it on now. <laughs> not so keen on the reels, I'm not going to lie. But I think the rods, I think they're beautiful. I think they are really, really nice. They are going to be amazing for playing fish on. Yeah, you just, you just got to hook one on a potato. Just got to, I, can, I reckon I can free line anchored, with, with the whip bread. I'm going to get on this, on this big floppy dick. I reckon <laughs> I'm going to free line that potato in the middle. Yeah. But no, the action on that, it's, 
It's lovely. I, v I very much appreciate you getting these. I think that is epic. No, I'm actually, I was feeling a little bit down. I'm not gonna lie. I was feeling a little bit down the dumps, but now having this dick in my hand, I feel fine. I feel great. I feel ready to tech on anything. And no, seriously though, I'm really pumped for this. Uh, hooking and playing a fish on this is gonna be amazing. Let's do it then. Let's, let's hopefully get that far. I've got some old school rod rests, but I, I think even they would be out of place for this. I think it needs some, uh, some sticks, some twigs, branches made into, but then I have just paid five pounds, 20, five pounds 25 for, <laughs> for some bank so what, sticks. So what are you going to do? You're going to use the bank stick? Yeah. yeah. I'm too tight not to. <laughs> <laughs> um, Come on then. No, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to find a, um, two branches as, as rod rests, I think. I don't think there's going to be any. It's not the right type of... Yeah, willow, I don't think makes a good no. rod rest. Need like gonna... a Well, birch. would Richard, what would Richard Walker have had? Would he have had, like... I mean, he wouldn't have had the ones that you've just bought that would have Obviously. been made in China for about 2p. Yeah. Um, what would he have used? He'd have had some metal work thing, I imagine. Yeah. Or no, he would have had cane rod rests. Oh, yeah. That's what he would have had. Yeah. Uh, now, I'm going to look for some... Uh, I want to... Yeah, I'm thinking, like, basically... Look. What no, I mean, no, that, no, no, look, no, no, you've got no. a little six-inch stick here. I got it. You... I got it. I absolutely got this. I got this. What? How are you going to... Shh. Oh, you, I know you, what you're doing. You know, you know. Know. <laughs> That's such a good idea. That is legendary. That's brilliant. Okay, well, I've got them. <laughs> hmm. It's okay, we can... Double it up. Look at that. Look at that. That's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yes. That's innovation right there. Yeah. You should be in product development. <laughs> Scott Day who? Imagine me as a 1950s carp angler. Imagine how oh, yeah, far like, advanced like, we would yeah, be now. It, it would literally, it would be like Dick Walker who. <laughs> Everyone would be like, oh, I'm Mark Pitchers, you're the god. You're the god of carp fishing. You would have caught Clarissa at 56 pound. And you, you wouldn't have taken it to London Zoo, you'd have taken it to the Natural History Museum. <laughs> <laughs> this is not working good. No? No, it's fucking rock hard. It's not going in. I can literally just get the tip in. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, no. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you're liking that, aren't you? Yeah. Right, let's get some potatoes out there. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my 1950s style setup and it is quite simply a free-running 
bomb, which was invented by Dick Walker, although not till after the 1950s. But either way, I'm using a, a, a sliding lead weight. Well, this is non-toxic, but you get the drift. And it's just stopped by a split shot. And I think that's all they kind of use, just that. Hook tied directly to the main line. This is a size six. And that's it, that's the rig. It, it, it's as simple as it, it can be. It, it couldn't really be much more simpler. And I'm gonna fish with two slightly different presentations, but still using baits that were, were popular in the 1950s. And both are gonna be bread. One is gonna be a paste that I'm gonna to mix together now in my shopping bag. I've got some bread there and some honey to make a paste. Um, I've also got some sardines if I wanna make a, a fishy paste. And I've got some crusty bread as well. So the plan is to fish one on the bottom with a paste and one popped up like a zig with a piece of anchored crust. That's so old school. First zig rig, that was, anchored crust. First ever zig. Right, okay, let's uh, get some bait knocked up and get the rods in the water. Right. Right. Let's bend this dick. <laughs> okay, I don't know how this is gonna cast. It's more the reel I'm concerned about. The line does not seem to be coming off this spool freely and it's coming off in the opposite direction. So you can't like trap the line between your finger. Oh, you trap it on the back of your on finger. On the back of your finger. Oh. That's weird. I, well, that's really awkward. <laughs> and you have to, wind the spool on manually. Okay. Um, let's go like that. Well, that feels so weird. Okay. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it feels weird trapping the line on the back of your finger. It's, okay. Right. I don't want to snap the rod. Okay, here it goes. Oh, get out there. <laughs> Even felt it down, got a nice donk and everything. <laughs> I'd like to have gone about 30 yards further, I'm not gonna lie. I think I could get a heavier weight on that. And you did only lob it. I you did. could definitely get that further. Okay. It actually doesn't seem to go any further if you, if you cast it harder. So for my visual indicator, there was a few options available in the 1950s um, from putting a, a coin on the spool and putting a tobacco tin or something underneath it. So when the, when the spool moved, the coin would fall in the tin and make a sound. That was like the first bite alarm, wasn't it? Effectively. Um, or there was putting tin foil. Did they have tin foil in the? Yeah. In the yeah. Okay. So there was that tin foil around a knitting needle, or there was just a good old fashioned bit of dough, bit of paste on the line, which is what I'm going to do right now. I remember doing this in the 90s when I, I think I'd, I'd broken a bobbin or something, and I had to resort to using a bit of paste on the line. And when I woke up in the morning, a rat had ate through the paste and bit the line. <laughs> so I've never done it since then, if I'm honest, but I'm going to do it now. There we go. Look at that. There you go. Looking good. Right. Which one's going to go first? You're away, you're away, you're away. Come on, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
No. I thought no I way. told you. No. No. You were like, you won't catch on bread. I'm like, mate, it's a great tactic. I had so much confidence in the bread. You were like, you're not going to catch on a piece of bread. <laughs> well, I, I just didn't. It wasn't that I didn't think you could catch on bread because I've caught so many carp on bread. I just didn't. I just didn't think it was going to happen. I don't think it's a carp. Oh no! <laughs> it's hard to tell. It's so bendy. It's. It proper ripped off. It, it really it's did. Turning. Oh yeah, it was proper backwind and everything. If I had had that that coin on the spool, that would have been epic. It would have been a screamer. Oh, can't you just do this all day? Yeah. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, bream. Ah. Uh, a bream on how the could anchored it, crust. A bream felt lovely on the anchored crust as well. Imagine what a carp feels like. Oh, no. That is disappointing, but at the same time, who would have thought catching bream would actually be quite fun? A bream on a zig. Uh, there we go. I'm about to say about that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> your, your bobbin's still on your line. Yeah, it will be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he um he proper went for it, didn't he? The, old, the, the that was handle that was, was churning. That was super exciting. That's the most exciting brain, or the most excited I've ever been about catching a brain. Go get it back out and catch a car. There you go. I'm not in. Ah, oh, you definitely you had a proper. I think drop I've been back. done there. I think you've been done on the bread bobbin. Oh, it could have been a brain, again. Something, Something happened. happened. It was a proper drop back, wasn't it? It was. Something like that bread, that bread bread bobbin, bread bobbin business. Oh, you fished it on the way down. Did you? <laughs> That wasn't a bad singer, was it? That went out there. Well, I think that must have been quite a common occurrence, that, back in the, in the 1950s. Missed takes. You didn't have the hooking properties of the rigs that we have these days. It was just a, a free-running lead, a lead weight, and no bite indication. You had to be watching all the time for your your bit of bit of bread, your, your bread bobbin to give you your uh, your visual indication. So you had to be proper alert, which I wasn't then. I've got to say, I was sat behind the rods. I think I was faffing about on my phone actually <laughs> when I when I looked up and then just saw that the the bread bobbin had fallen right down. bite that I missed was on a, uh, a zig anchored crust at uh, about five and a half feet and I want to change other rod over um, which is currently being fished on, a, on, a, on the bottom with a piece of paste I want to change that over to another anchored crust setup so so that I don't miss another bite although that last bite was a drop back um, so that I don't miss another bite I want to have some uh, audible indicator system um, buzzers obviously weren't around in the 1950s, but what they did have was tins and coins. So what I'm going to do, I've got a, a tin, and this is a, a line spool tin, but I'm going to put a tin underneath the spool and balance some coins on the spool there. So what happens there when the fish moves, that's it. Screamer, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I'm going to do. If it comes towards you, what happens? If it comes towards you, you it, it doesn't matter. Forget about it. You, it's, it's game over again, isn't it? But you won't know anything about it. But if it goes forward, we're laughing. We'll know about it. So I'm going to balance some coins on there. 
I've got a mixture of euros and pounds and pence. Look at that. There we go. So now, if the fish does move away from us and turns that spool, then we'll have the deafening noise of those pennies hitting the tin. Well, this afternoon has been so frustrating. I've had quite a few strange takes where the, the rods kind of slammed over and then the, the, the spool spun back a little bit. The pennies have hit the tin and I've picked up the rod. There's been nothing there. I've not bumped anything, not felt anything. And then uh, on this occasion, the take, if anything, was a little bit more tentative. The rod tip just sort of bounced a little bit. I thought, you know what, I'm going to strike. I haven't struck probably since the 90s, <laughs> since we started using lead clips and so on. But I thought, I'm going to strike. Anyway, I struck and the rod's just hooped over and we are playing a carp. You can see the, it's, it's only a small fish, but it feels massive on this rod. It's absolutely incredible for playing fish on. It really is so much fun playing fish on this, this light, bendy rod. I feel like I'm back in Redmire. I feel like it's transported me back to the early days of carp fishing. I feel like I am Dick Walker right now. Or Dick something anyway. I'm absolutely loving the rods. The reels I'm not as keen on. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I could fish with these rods all the time. I would love them. Here we go. There we go. This time. This time. Not this time, but this time. This time. There he is. In the net. Yes! Well, that took a while. Look at that. Straight out of Redmire, that one. Got a common of around, oh, probably about eight pound. So the sort of fish you would have caught in Redmire about five, ten years ago, to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, that was so frustrating the day, wasn't it? All them, them missed takes. It, I don't know what was going on. Well, it was like it was literally like the first time that you struck. Bearing in mind that you have to like strike through the bread, yeah, and it's not piece a of, hair piece of crust you have, and The that. hook point isn't exposed. The first time you properly gave it the big one, yeah. gave it a strike. That was a proper strike. That was yeah. a prop. I, I struck like a junior doctor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, big, full on, thirty-five percent pay rise strike. That was <laughs> right. Okay, they didn't use a nookie mat back in the 50s. Let's just drag him up the bank and have a look at him. <laughs> well, he's not a monster, but I'm sure lots of anglers back in the 1950s would have been ecstatic to catch a carp of that size, or catch a carp of any size, really. And it did fall to tactics very synonymous with the 1950s, the, the dawn of carp fishing, and that is the anchored crust. This was fished at about five feet up in the water where I saw the fish cruising around and after some frustrating missed takes this one finally came along. That's another decade ticked off the list and as I'm holding this fish I've just realized I think I've missed a trick and I do have a bit of a plan which I need to run by Harry because I think I've just yeah I think I've just had an idea on how I can smash this challenge. So yeah, I think I've missed a trick here, Harry. There's nothing in the rules that says that I can't fish multiple eras at the same time. No, there isn't. So I could be fishing one rod 60s style 
one rod 70s style, one rod 80s style, potentially, and there's nothing. No, there's nothing. Yeah, of course you could do that. <laughs> of course I can do that. Of course you could. I, I, I mean, I was thinking why you hadn't done it before, but, you know, I don't like to tell you what to do, so I just thought I'd let you make up your own mind of what to do. But I'd have been fishing three different eras right from the start, personally. I felt like if I had done that, you would have said it wasn't possible. I might have done then. <laughs> <laughs> Did I not? Can we not have a bit of a rewind? Did I not ask this right at the beginning? No. no. And no. you said, no, that's not possible. No. No. Definitely. But now it is possible. I mean, I might say, I might say that off cam camera. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, no, it's definitely, po yeah, of course, why not? Right, okay. So the 60s and 70s, I'm going to do both eras at once. The 60s was very much an experimental baits era, experimenting with pastes as well as things like bacon grill and luncheon meat and things like that. So that, I think, is in the bag. The 70s was the particle revolution, popularised by the likes of Rod Hutchinson. So I've got particles, I've got sweet corn, I've got chickpeas, baits I'm confident will catch me carp, and I feel like now I can really push on and get this challenge nailed. So this is the rig that I've tied up for the 1970s, for fishing with particles. And it was in the late 1970s that the hair rig was first devised. Not many people knew about it until the 1980s but its inception came about in the 1970s. So this is what the original hair rig will have looked like. Just a fine piece of mono tied to the bend of the hook to create separation. Before then, the hook was uh, buried within a bait and you'd have to strike hard to get the hook clear of the bait so it could actually hook the fish. But well, this got rid of that problem. Uh, it creates nice separation and the hook holds, uh, the hooking ratio improved massively and we've never looked back since have we really so yeah that's the rig i've got double chickpea on i'm going to bait up uh, by catapult um, with a mixture of sweet corn and chickpeas fish double chickpea over the top and hopefully that's going to bring about uh, a fish and get the 70s ticked off the list so here we go this is my 1960s rig the hair rig wasn't invented then so we were we i say we were like i was around it <laughs> we, the royal we of carp anglers. I guess what I mean, of course. So this is my 1960s rig, and because the hair rig hadn't been invented yet, um, people were still uh, side hooking the bait or burying the, the hook within the bait. Um, here, what I've done, I've just pushed the hook uh, through a cube of bacon grill and then just kind of twisted it around and pushed it back through. So the hook point is actually still exposed, so it shouldn't hinder the hooking too much. I mean, although the hook point is exposed there, it's still gonna require a, a swift strike to set that hook and pull it out of that, that, that bacon. It's quite tough. I've left this out in the, in the sun, actually, uh, just for half an hour, and it's give it a nice tough skin to withstand the casting. It does need a bit of a, a whip to get it out there. But um, this rig, uh, it's probably not quite what would they would have used in the 60s. I don't think they'd have had swivels and rubber beads and things like that, but the, the baiting and the approach is, is very much there. And this is actually the rig, the very same rig I used to catch my very first carp. Not in the 1960s, I wasn't born then. <laughs> but yeah, in the, well, it was, it was 1989. I caught my very first carp using this exact same rig, same presentation with side hook piece of meat, it weighed six pound exactly, caught from Grafton Rear, near Borough Bridge. And I remember that six pounder looked like an absolute monster to me when I was 11 years old. And yeah, this, this is the exact setup. I think I'd like an ounce and a half running lead, a little rubber bead, a swivel, and then a, a slightly lighter mono hook link, side up piece of meat, and that was it. And the hook I used was a Jack Hilton carp hook. That's carpy, isn't it? Jack Hilton. He's one of the he's one of the particle revolutionizers as well of the 1970s. Wrong decade for this, but there you go. Thought I'd drop another famous angler into the mix. Right, let's get it in there and try and get this decade up and up and running. Well not up and running. You just need to get it up. And then. Up. Get big dick out and get it up. Got dick in one hand and meat in the other hand. 
<laughs> okay. Okay, you ready? Oh, that's tangled again. It's catching on something. You ready? You ready? Yeah. Meat dick. There you go. <laughs> wow, what's up? <laughs> How far that goes? These chickpeas do catapult out really nicely. So does the meat with the wind behind it. That's going out well. Probably going at my maximum casting distance, to be honest. So at the moment, I've got a mixture of chickpeas, some luncheon meat, some sweet corn out as well. Nice, I'm liking that. I think that's, yeah, that's looking pretty good. believe it it's only been probably about half an hour if that since I baited that spot with some corn and chickpeas and I just had double chickpea on that hair tied directly to the bend of the hook and I'm playing a fish <laughs> and honestly playing fish on these rods it feels amazing this one does feel a bit bigger but I think everything feels, everything feels big on them. It's feeling heavy as I'm trying to lift him. Oh, it's taking some back wind. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, he's really going. Look at the bend in that. Well, that's a bit bigger. I thought it felt heavy, but quite deceiving on these on these soft rods. Oh, that's nice. Here she comes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get in the net. Get in. Yes. In the bag on chickpeas. That's the first time I've caught a carp on chickpeas, probably since since the 90s, I think. Didn't we do a supermarket baits challenge where I had to catch on a chickpea? And I, I don't think I did catch on a chickpea, did I? Oh, that's nice. That's a yeah, it's a, it's a mid double. Give up a a great scrap on this light rod. I'm happy. I'm really, really happy with that. So, 60s to go. What am I waiting for? What have I got on the 60s rod? Bacon. bacon grill. Come on, bacon grill. Don't let me down. Right, let's have a quick look at him. And, um, yeah, I'm going to get an 80s tactic thought up oh, on this rod. Right, come on. I, uh, I want to get moving now. <laughs> I've got a proper spring in my step. It's absolutely nailed on the old school hair rig. Where's that line going? Which was just tied to the, the bend of the hook like that. 
that's how the original Harry came about. Well, there we go. We've got a common of around £15, which fell to the double chickpea and was tamed by my 10 foot floppy dick, which I've got <laughs> leaning on my shoulder. That's how I always like to have it on my thrown over my shoulder there. And yeah, that was that was a great bit of fun. On that on that light rod, it really is an absolute joy to, to be playing fish like this on that light tackle. I never saw the fascination before, but I get it now. I totally get it. Right, they're slipping back because I need to conjure up something from the 80s. Yeah, that too. Go tell your friends, you tasted my 10 foot dick. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you're in, you're in, you're in. So I've literally just finished catapulting a bit of a, a top up of bacon grill over this, this spot. Oh, it's real, come on. <laughs> don't, don't seize up now. Not after all these years, don't go now. But yeah, just finished topping up with another half dozen cubes. Of, of bacon grill and uh, I just saw the rod tip start bouncing and we're in playing the fish on bacon grill come on real come on real. come on real you can do it how hard did you strike I think I struck as hard as the miners in the in the night <laughs> No? <laughs> no? I mean, to be fair, that was very hard. Exactly. So, fair play to them and fair play to you. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. It's, it. it's not feeling huge, I'm not going to lie, but it doesn't really matter. It really doesn't matter. There's my little bait station there. Right, here we go, stuck on something. Now I've got him under the, under the, oh, I've just seen him for the first time. I was just gonna say, now I've got him under the tip. He does feel, he does feel like the biggest one I've hooked so far. That's not a bad fish. If you hook something like this in the 60s, you'd be bricking it right now. You think you've done all winter, you've done your winter campaign, Caught nothing, obviously. You're now into April. And this is your first bite of the year. You haven't had a fish, you haven't hooked a fish for a year. <laughs> Can you imagine? It'd be terrifying. There he is. He's gonna come up. Rod's really creaking. There we go, there we go. The rod's so soft, it's hard for me to keep that pressure on him. Come on. Come on. Oh, there he is. He just popped up all of a sudden. There we go, get in that net. No, 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 get in, get in, get in. Yes! Got him. Okay, so that's more like it. What's that now? 50s, 60s, 70s. Done. Where is he? Oh, he's not a bad one. Oh, he's definitely the biggest so far from this lake anyway. Oh yeah, that's the one. Right, have I got time to catch one from the 80s? I'm not sure. Let's take a look at him and see where we go from there. Well, here we are. This one fell to a, a piece of bacon grill, 
1960s style, although still a, a really popular bait today amongst lots of anglers. And yeah, this common of around 17, 18 pound, uh, certainly liked it. And it helped me get the 60s decade ticked off the list. I'm now left with quite a quandary though. Do I stay here for a little bit longer, try and get the 80s done, or do I head back over to the main lake and try and do the more recent decades and also fish for some bigger fish? Don't know, let's slip him back and I'll make a decision. Okay, so I've made the decision. I'm gonna head back over to the the big fish lake for the night, try and get some more of the, the modern uh, tactics, modern eras ticked off the list, and also have a chance of landing some bigger fish. I've always got this lake in the morning, um, should things not go to plan over there. But let's not think about that just now. Let's, uh, let's get packed up and headed over there because uh, time is against me. I wanna get them rods sorted before it gets dark. Right. Okay, so I'm in a bit of a rush right now. I'm just getting the rods re-wrapped up to the spot that I was fishing last night. I just need to make a change on one of the rods. I'm still gonna fish two rods with my favored doubled over hinge stiff, but, uh, but I'm gonna fish one rod with a Ronnie rig, which is very much up to date. Um, probably the most popular rig around currently. So I'm gonna fish a Ronnie rig for the 2020s using really new components. And I think if I can get a fish on one of those tactics, one of those presentations tonight, that's gonna to put me in really good stead for the final hurdle, final furlong going into tomorrow. Well, this rig brings us bang up to date. Uh, here I've got a spinner rig or Ronnie rig, probably one of the most wildly, wildly? What, wild. Probably wildly and widely. And it's probably the most wild, why do I keep saying? Keep us... It's probably the most wildy. <laughs> what the fuck, I can't say it. <laughs> I think you're just gonna have to say it. it's the wildly, I know I can't say it right, but it is the most wildly used. Okay. Well, this is the Ronnie rig or spinner rig, whatever you want to call it. And it's probably the most popular rig around these days. And it does bring us bang up to date. Um, I mean, the hook I'm using, that is a, only released last year. It's the Wide Gape Longshank. It's my favorite pattern for this rig. And I'm yet to have a hook pull on this, this pattern of hook, the Wide Gape Longshank, since I've been using it now, what, 18 months? And every fish I've hooked, I've gone on to land. The boom section is tied using a brand new prototype material. It's a supple coated braid, but it still has enough stiffness to be able to push 
a critically balanced hook bait away from the lead so it's it's pushed away it lands nice and straight but it still has enough suppleness so that it follows the contours of the lake bed it won't kick up should it land over any debris it also has a nice natural weed green coloration and it looks very natural on the lake bed it's fast become my favorite hook lake material not just for this rig but for others as well and i think a lot of people are going to be using this in the coming years and who knows decades centuries even millennia Well, the rods are on the dance floor. I've got two rods on hinge stiff rigs representing the 2010s. I've got a rod fished on a Ronnie representing the 2020s. And I've got four decades I need to complete. And right now I feel like it's all very much in the balance. And I think whether I pass this challenge or not very much depends on what happens between now and I'd say between around nine o'clock in the morning. If I can put a fish or two on the bank between now and nine o'clock in the morning, I think I've got this in the bag. However, if I wake up and nothing's happened by nine o'clock in the morning, it's a different story entirely. Boom, boom, boom. around 2 a.m. and the Ronnie is away. This fish went on a proper run. As I picked up that rod, it went on a, a 20 yard, a 20 yard run. It's coming rather freely now. Shake this one off. <laughs> I'm probably trembling. It's not cold. It doesn't look a bad one. Look a bad one. It does look like a long, angry male, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, stop this! Oh. This would mean some fun on me on me big floppy dick rods, wouldn't it? in the net bush grand fromage can't say that can <laughs> oh that's a bit bigger than i thought that's, that's all right that's not bad that's not bad is that 27 something like that maybe yeah. yep that's a dirty that's a dirty one Okay. 
proper old gnarly one that. What are you saying? I'm saying I think it's up there. I think it's close to 30. What are you saying? I, I'm, yeah, I'm saying it's... Do I look gonna, or do I'm you look? It's scrape. I'll look. You think it's going to scrape? I think it's going to scrape. I think it could... Yeah, it's, it's, it's about that, isn't it? Just under, I reckon. Uh, yeah, yeah. 29.3? 28.12. Yeah, uh, close. <laughs> okay. Oh, you are a wrinkly old beast. There we go. That is a proper gnarly one, isn't it? What was he, 28.12? But, uh, might be old, but he's still, still powerful. But this fish fell to a, a carp freaks pop up, fished on a spinner rig. Very much a trending presentation right now, and for good reason too, because it is such a super effective setup. And that leaves me with just two more decades to go and about 12 hours to do it. So I'm feeling quite good right now. Three more decades. Three decades. Uh, don't feel quite as good then. But I still feel quite good. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, so... I'm going to get that rod back out there. I've got three decades to go, 80s, 90s, and still the 2010s. Um, although I'm actually fishing with two rods currently in 20s, 2010s style, I am going to put that presentation on the rod. I'm going to cast back out there just because I do feel like a pop-up is the best presentation for this situation I'm fishing in. And the closest thing to a, to a Ronnie, that I just caught that fish on, would be a, a low-lying hinge stiff rig. So that's what I'm going to tie up, put it in that rod, get it straight back out there, and hopefully get another decade ticked off the list. There we go. Well, this came pretty much right on time because I had set myself a bit of a time limit to be here. And I said, if I haven't caught anything by nine o'clock, I need to be moving. And it's literally a bang on nine o'clock. And we are playing a fish on a short hinge stiff rig. It's the same rod that produced the fish on the Ronnie rig. I just kind of replicated that with a, a short doubled over hinge stiff. Oh, never. What? It's that, tench? It's a fucking park bench. <laughs> I'm like, this isn't very big. That is the most, oh, it's a, another angry male. Right, that's... Uh, I'm thinking it feels like a low double, but I'll take a low double. It's not a low double. It's a big angry male tench. He's been a bit of a problem this morning, actually. Oh, he's a nice one, though. There you go, look at that. John Wilson would have loved one of them, wouldn't he? I don't love you. I think you're a prick. Go away. <laughs> Oh dear. Yeah. Right, yeah, that's 
What have I had this morning? Two tench, got done by a tench. I'm, getting, I'm being tenched out. I think it's time to move. <laughs> That's annoying, but at least I know what I've got to do now. So, so we've got three decades to go and about, what are we on? Six hours to do it. There are about six, seven hours to do it. Yeah, it can still happen. It can still happen. Um, if I get a move on, it can anyway. So, right, I'm going to get packed down, head over to the uh, M1 lake, and I can still do it. You can you, still you do both it? both looking at me like... No, I've got this in the bag. It's okay. I've got a, I've got a plan, and it's going to happen. Let's put it into action. So we're back over on M1 and we need three fish from three decades to pass this challenge. And I have got another surprise for you, Harry. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not a, it's not a big dick. <laughs> this time. Not another big dick. Oh, mini, mini microns. microns. Of course. From the 90s, of from course. the about 90, 93, I think it was. Did you use mini microns in Cuttle on mill. the Cuttle yeah. Mill or was it Ultrons you used? No, it was a mini microns, mini microns. I used in the Cuttle Mill. You got me them as a, as a surprise because you knew I always wanted them. And you gave me them for the challenge and you took them back off me. So I kind of thought, well, screw you, I'll go and buy me on for this <laughs> challenge. And uh, yeah, I always wanted a set. I, I think they... I always thought they looked really cool. They alarm still do. Fellas. They do. They still do. Yeah. They had great little alarms. And yeah, I've I finally got a set for myself and I'm going to keep them and cherish them. Excellent. And hopefully catch a carp using them today. I've got another surprise though. Oh. So that's 90s. You're full of surprises. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> ba -ba -da -ba. Monkey climber. An original solar light flow. Monkey climber. It's the only one I could find out there. <laughs> you only got one. How the six I had. I don't know where the others have gone, but I found one from the, the six I had. And uh, yeah, I got these, it'll have been about 92. But monkey climbers were around in the, in the, in the late 80s. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And obviously became more popular and trendy in the, uh, in the early 90s. So yeah, I'm going to use this for my 90s setup. I'm going to use one of them. That's all I've got. Yeah. <laughs> One of them with my mini microns. And I don't know what tactic I'm going to use it for the, the 90s. I need to have a bit of a think. But I'm already 90% there with a mini micron and a monkey climber, really. Yeah. All you need is a rig and a carp. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's get cracking. Okay. Well, while I've still got one of my hinge stiff rigs on the rods and I need to catch on that, I want to get that in place first. I'm going to spod some bait over the top of it, uh, some boiling and pellet, hinge diff rig over the top, try and catch a fish on the, the 2010s, get that one out of the way. And then while I'm doing that, I can be thinking about my plan for the 80s and 90s. Right now, I'm a little bit undecided on what to do, but first things first, I want to get this hinge diff rig in the water and get some bait over the top of it. Okay, so that's the 2010s rod in place. Just want to get some bait over the top of it now. Mm. 
Following the launch of Cart World magazine in the late 80s and Big Cart magazine in 1990, carp fishing boomed as it became available to a much wider audience. And with that, there were great strides forward in the development of bait, rigs and tackle, the likes of which we'd never seen before or since. And many of those elements are still with us in the, the tackle and the rigs that we use today. Now, the rig that I'm using here was pretty much my go-to rig in the 1990s. Now, I started carp fishing in 1988, but for me, the 90s were the glory days of carp fishing. And the rig I have here was pretty much what I used right through the 90s. And it's still a super effective rig today. It's called the Line Liner Rig. It's tied using either a mono or a braided hook link. Here I'm using 25 pound reflex braid, but back in the day it would have been Christon Silkworm or Merlin. The braid is tied to a size six hook. Here I'm using a super specialist. Also tied to the eye of the hook, I have some dental floss. Um, that's again, just tied with a blood knot and I've tied a loop on the end of that dental floss to attach the bait to the hair. I've got a piece of silicon tubing over the shank of the hook to secure the hair in place. Now over the eye of the hook, I've got a piece of shrink tube steamed down to make everything nice and neat. But also I've used a, a needle, pushed it through the shrink tube and pulled the hook link out of the side of the shrink tube. Now the idea of doing this is to help the hook turn. Today you get a similar effect just by using a knotless knot and an interned eye on the hook. But back then most of the hooks were straight eyed. So by using the, this line the liner rig and the line exiting the shrink tube in that fashion, it helped the hook turn. So every time that hook link tightens, the hook turns, the hook flips every time. Every time it catches a hold in the palm test. Now the 1990s also saw the boom of PVA. Up until now we'd had PVA string, PVA tape, but later in the 90s we had continuous length of PVA mesh on a tube and that revolutionized the way in which we fish PVA. You can put a handful of bait inside the tube, tie a couple of overhand knots and you've instantly got a little mesh PVA bag. And that's what I'm gonna to attach to this rig with a lead clip setup, which again, was launched in the 90s, and that will complete my 90s approach. There you go, the one. Oh yes. There you go, you're right, you're right. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. That was a proper take that was wasn't it? I um I forgot. These days I fish with a much tighter a much tighter clutch. I don't fish with like a a free spool to let the carp run freely. I just sort of automatically set it quite tight. But back in the 90s, the case of having bait runners super slack, they're almost getting line pulled off them with the weight of a, a bobbin or a monkey climber. But yeah, that was a still a good take though. Good take when the reel smashed against the alarm. This is your this, hinge. This is the hinge, yeah. It's not feeling like what's, a bad one. <laughs> what's the difference in uh, in playing from with your I instantly <laughs> your, your X X six twelve foot I three and three quarter pound so tiered. much more in control. I really Less do. frightened. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said yesterday, it was mega enjoyable on them light rods and on, on like smaller waters. Where I'm not having to steer fish away from stagings and any potential uh, roots and branches that may be down there. I feel so much more in control using modern tackle than I did what I was using yesterday. But you know, that made it all the more exhilarating, I guess. There we go. 
There we go. He's there, yes. Oh. So that'll be the 2010s done. Another Clarissa. Very nice. What? What do you reckon? Where does that put you? What do you think? Oh, we've got what? What, two hours left? It's tight still. It's still very, very tight. I've got two hours to catch on two, two decades. But, I mean, that hasn't taken long to get that bite. That's probably taken half an hour. I don't know. I think, I think all bar a disaster I think I've got this in the bag. Big, big, no, big talk, words. That, That's big that words. Big I know, talk. I know. I did that for you. That, that, and then you can play on that when I fail, if I fail, which I won't. Yeah. You're getting your nails done in an on-site nail bar. Well, oh, imagine yeah. this is this must be the only carp fishery in the world with an on-site nail bar. They knew you were coming, of course. Had it installed. Right. Let's have a look at this. It'd be great if that 90s rod was to rip off right now, wouldn't it? There he is. He probably is the smallest fish, of course, so far this session, but it doesn't matter. It's, uh, he's worth his weight in gold, because that is another decade ticked off, and it leaves me with just two more to go. No, 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 So the 1980s was the HNV revolution, the high nutritional value baits, and we saw boilies hitting the tackle shops for the very first time. So for my approach, for the 1980s, if Harry allows it, I'm gonna use boilies. Boilies. Boilies, but fished on yeah. a very much a 1980s rig. So it's still the same rig that they were using in the 1970s, the hair rig, with the hair just being a fine piece of mono tied to the bend of the hook. And here I have a boilie. And I'm gonna bait up with some boilies. And I think that is very 1980s. It is very 1980s, so I will allow it. Thank you, then I shall use it. Go for more carp to catch. Yep, okay, here we go. Well, the old monkey rod was away. The 90s rod, my favorite rod. By the way, you probably noticed I've completely changed like all the, all the clothes. We were just uh, doing some uh, photos and videos of some new, new clothing, some new products coming out. And that's when I had this take. So yeah, I'm, I'm wearing all new clothes. And now I'm gonna have to put my wellies on with shorts and look a proper wally, aren't I? This is not a good look, is it? So this is this is gonna sell some shorts, isn't it? This this shot right now. There you go. <laughs> Having a good little pull around, isn't he? How do today's tactics compare to the ones that you were using yesterday? Oh yeah, it's night and day, isn't it? What I'm using today compared to what I was using on this lake yesterday with the, well, everything, isn't it? Every aspect from the, the bait, the rigs, the, the tackle, everything is completely different. And while I did massively appreciate using those lovely soft rods for playing the fish on, I think I do prefer the modern tackle that we have today. And I don't think, I think anyone starting carp fishing now probably doesn't know just how lucky we are to have the amount of tackle at our disposal that we do. But equally, there was something quite nice about having to 
having to use makeshift gear back then. There wasn't all the, the dedicated carp fishing equipment and you did have to improvise and adapt and overcome. And I quite like that as well. Bosh! <laughs> there we go, that's a nice fish. Oh, oh if well I had caught mate. something like that in the 90s, I would have been ecstatic. It would be my PB if I'd have caught it in the 90s, anyway. <laughs> okay. Well done. Just one, one, to one go. left to do, yeah. Time check. Time check. One hour. So it took you an hour to get that bite. That was it, but I was, yeah. Ooh, okay. Well, an hour and six minutes if we're being exact, which I'm guessing you will be. So just the 80s to go. I mean, the, the rig, I, well, I mean, the bait's exactly the same as what's on the 80s rig. It was just a, it was just a, just a bottom bait, straight from the bag, fished on a liner liner, whereas that is just a bottom bait, straight from the bag, fished on a hair, tied direct to the bend. So, very, very similar. Right, we need to take a look at this fish, then I'm gonna swap this rig over, fish them both 80s style, and I've got one hour and a bit to get this challenge wrapped up. Ah, and there's the rig. And there we go, we've got a cool looking mirror with the twin scales there in the middle of the flank, probably of about 17 plus, something like that. I'd have been ecstatic catching a fish this size in the 90s, I'm pretty chuffed with it right now because I've just got one decade to go, the 80s. Still got one rod in play. I'm gonna switch things around on the rod that I've just caught this fish on, use identical rig, identical tactics, get it back out there, and I've got an hour to get this challenge in the bag. Absolute magic. A spray on your back. There you go. For the majority of this challenge, Mark has been begging me to let one of you guys or girls get your hands on his two floppy dicks. And now is your opportunity. So we've got the Richard Walker House of Hardy classic carp rods here and the Mitchell 300 reels plus a spare Mitchell 300 reel. And you have got the opportunity to win this absolute vintage setup for just 99p. Now all of the proceeds from this competition are going to go to the Douglas Macmillan Hospice, which is where our dear friend Ian Macmillan sadly passed, his, passed away, but received absolutely fantastic end of life care. So you've got the opportunity to win this epic piece of carp fishing history because we've teamed up with Capital Carp Competitions. So the link to the competitions is going to be in the description below. You can either go via their website or you can download their app. We'll also put a link to their app in the description. Please also leave a comment saying which era was your favorite from carp fishing, from the history of carp fishing, and uh, let us know how you've enjoyed this challenge. So. Best of luck to everyone who enters. I'm sure whoever wins these is going to be super happy. Well, I've just had the weirdest bite ever. 
I've literally just cast the rod back out after slipping back that really nice 17 pounder. Just clip the bobbin on and the line's just tightened up again a little bit more and then just drop back down a tiny bit. Thinking, what's going on here? Picked up the rod and there's a fish on. It must have literally took it on the drop. It's been in the water for seconds and I'm playing a fish. And if this goes in the net, that is it. Challenge. I'm not, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> it's not a bad fish, I've just seen it. Yeah. I was wondering what was going on. It happened so fast, I'm thinking if I picked up a trailer or something. And as soon as I picked up the rod, the fish was on the surface. And it stayed there all the way in. It's just been fighting just under the surface all the way in, like a like a marlin or something. Strange fight, strange take. Yeah, I did think it was fighting just like a marlin as well. Yeah, exactly like that. And then he said, get the harness. <laughs> Strap me in. <laughs> Not a bad fish. We never had takes like that in the 90s. That's what confused me. We only had screamers in the 90s. None of this inch lift and inch lift and an inch drop back and all that. I am playing this fish lighter than I would do normally because I'm only on a, a light mono hook link. Oh, that was a that was a pink. Not a bad fish. Okay, here we go. This time, there he is. This is the time, there we go. There we go. He's done. This one for the win. Get in that net, Marsh! <laughs> <laughs> You can't do that for the for the finale. I can let it go and swim back out and <laughs> not really. <laughs> not really. There we go. That's it. That's been a long time since I've passed the challenge. A long time. That is a pass, right, yeah? It, it's you know, a pass, there's no, no yeah, other no. twists or turns or anything like that. No, no, you've done you've done well because this was tricky. It was tricky. It, it was, was very trickier. laborious and time consuming. It was trickier than I anticipated actually. Yeah, me too. I thought it sounded a doddle on paper. <laughs> right. Well done. Thank well you. Done. Let's have a look. There you go. Not quite as big as what I thought I was hooked into. A marlin. His uh, long floppy length had me thinking I was dealing with something much larger. But I'm happy all the same because it means finally after I don't know how many failed challenges, this one is a pass. I've done it. I've gone past a challenge for the first time in what feels like forever. Managed to catch fish using tackle and tactics synonymous with every era dating back to the dawn of carp fishing, dawn of modern carp fishing, the 1950s. And yeah, it feels great. So it's been good, it's been great fun. It's been great fun using the tackle and tactics from all the various eras. So I guess all that's left for me to say right now is challenge complete. All that's left for me to say right now is challenge complete. Here we go. Can, can you hum the Go Fishing theme tune as I'm releasing it, please? Just for what, me. The, for me the, more the than hum, it. Which one? The bum, first bum, one? Bum, 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 that one. Not the... That was the, too the, late. No, the original, the original. Right. Come on, you ready? Yeah. Go. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Absolute magic.
and spray on your back. Wilson always finished with that. <laughs> yeah, oh, legend. It.